Hey everyone, Percy here. So some of you may already have seen it. Sonable has released a brand new version of their flagship. Is it their flagship? I don't know, but anyway, they've released a brand new version of their Smart EQ plugin. It's the third version, so Smart EQ 3, obviously. Now, it was just released a few days ago. Sonable has reached out to me and they asked me if I wanted to take a look at it. And I said, yes, I'd be happy to. Because I really thought that this could be one of the most interesting releases of 2021 so far. So, yeah, let's take a look at Smart EQ 3. Super C So what is Smart EQ? What is Smart EQ 3? Well, it is actually exactly as the name suggests. So technically it is still an EQ, but it is very heavily leaning on its built-in AI, so artificial intelligence, which very obviously is the prime feature of this tool. Now, as you can read on their website, so Smart EQ 3 enhances detail, clarity and transparency. So detail, clarity and transparency. Keep that in mind. Now, of course, the best way to really explain is just to show you a little example. Okay, so here we are in my DAW. As you can see, I've created a very simple loop with just some drums, bass, piano, and a guitar. Everything is unprocessed, so I haven't added any effects, any EQ whatsoever. Um, and okay, let's just take a listen. Okay, you get the idea. Now let's just solo the uh, piano. It sounds like this. All right, and now let's open an instance of Smart EQ 3. So how it basically works is this. So first of all, from up here, we can choose a profile. Now by default, it is set to universal, but of course we can choose another one. By the way, we can also save our own profiles, but we can also choose from a factory profile. Now, somehow the piano profile seems to be the most appropriate here. So let's uh, choose that one. Um, and then if I click this button here, which I call the learn button, not even sure if it is officially called that. But if I press this button and then play the music, so play the piano, what will happen is that within seconds, Smart EQ will analyze the sound coming from the piano and it will try to optimize the spectral curve, as they call it. Basically, it, it will just try to optimize the sound coming from the piano by applying a pretty detailed EQ curve. Now, before I start, I would recommend listening on some good headphones or some good monitor speakers to get the full effect. But anyway, let's give it a go. So let's press this learn button and let's play the music. So Smart EQ has done its thing. And as I mentioned, as you can see, um, it has added a pretty detailed EQ curve. So the white line obviously is the EQ curve. Now, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to bypass Smart EQ. I'm gonna play again the, um, the piano and I'm gonna switch Smart EQ on and off so you can hear the difference. So let's go. So a huge difference, couldn't be more different. Now let's go back to the website, do you remember? Detail, clarity and transparency. So has that been achieved here? Well, to be honest, I have to say, at first I thought it actually sounded a little bit muffled, so a little bit boxy or muddy, as they call it. But the longer I listened to it, I started to realize that it has actually taken away some of the in my opinion, potentially unwanted higher frequencies. And it has added some more, it has given a little bit more body to the piano. So detail, clarity and transparency, I'd say yes, from a certain perspective, it's actually done a pretty good job. 
But here's the thing. Now let me show you this. Now I've also added an instance of Neutron 3 by Isotope on this track. And as you might know, now Isotope also comes with a lot of AI built in. And I've also unleashed the AI of Neutron 3 on this track. So let's listen to what it came up with. Well, from a certain perspective, Neutron also did a pretty good job. But now let's hear the difference. So I'm gonna switch back and forth between Neutron and Smart EQ so you can hear the difference. Let's go. Now again, a huge difference, day and night. So which one is better? What is the good one? <laughs> well, of course, that all depends on our perspective and what it is that we're actually trying to go for. And that is something that the artificial intelligence in Smart EQ 3, nor the AI in Neutron 3 or any AI anywhere doesn't know. You know, artificial intelligence is never going to know what we want. You know, so that is why I believe that artificial intelligence is never going to replace us. Or at least not anytime soon. You never know, they might come up with some kind of uh, mind reading technology in the future that can predict what we want. We might have to ask Elon Musk to look into that. But anyway, until then, it's not going to take our place. But keep in mind that that is also not what Sonable is claiming. Sonable isn't saying, okay, just throw a Smart EQ 3 on all of the tracks on your song, and that's that, your song is now mixed. That's not how it works. And that's also not what they're claiming. They're saying that you can use Smart EQ to kind of clean up the sound on your tracks, and you can use that as a starting point to further mix your songs with. And apparently it's doing a pretty good job at that. And of course, we can also change the settings manually. So let's take a look at that now. So if I click this green node over here, which is called the weighted curve, by the way, so the, the, the entire green line, that is the weighted curve. Uh, if I click it, then down here, we can see the parameters of the weighted curve. So first of all, this is the mid frequency. So the middle of this curve, of the weighted curve is 632 Hertz. Now next to that, we have the strength. Um, and that determines the strength or intensity of the EQ curve. So if I move it up, you can see the intensity becomes, uh, it becomes more intense. If I move it down, it becomes much more a subtle thing. I can also go negative even for whatever reason you might have, it is possible. Now next to that, we have the width. That is very interesting. So I can change the width and you can see that the width of the weighted curve is being uh, modified. And with this, if I move it all the way to the, to the right, for example, now you can see everything to the left of the weighted curve now is unaffected. If I move it to the left, everything to the right is unaffected. So that allows for some very interesting editing. Okay, then we have the dynamic. So that is, if I believe that is new to Smart EQ 3, we now can make this curve dynamic. So that is pretty awesome. I have to say, apparently it is putting some pressure on your, on your CPU, but it is uh, it's awesome that it's there. Then we have the slope. So we have the low slope and the high slope. And then we can also split the weighted curve. And now we have kind of two weighted curves to call it that. And we can change the settings uh, independent from one another. So again, very interesting feature. Now, and then of course, just like with any other EQ, we can also create some 
uh, normal nodes let's call it that by just double clicking now and then again down here we can see the parameters by the way if we right click on the node a little widget opens up where you can also see the parameters so that's a nice little touch um, so first of all here we have the type of filter we can set the type of filter next to that we have the frequency then we have the gain settings we have the Q settings and then here we have the processing modes um, so I can cycle through so stereo mid and side so we do have some uh, mid side uh, options so that is great of course Okay, and then last but certainly not least, we can now also use groups. So if we go up here and click join group, uh, we can see that we can now create a new group or we can add this instance of Smart EQ to an already existing group. Now, as you can see, there is no existing group yet. So let's create a new group. Let's call it uh, group one, so G1. And let's create this group. Now, as you can see here, this instance of uh, Smart EQ3 is now part of a group. So far, it's the only member of the group, but it is part of a group. Now, down here, we can see that there are three other instances of Smart EQ in this song that we can add from right here. So let's do that. Let's add them all to the group. And voila, so now we have a group with four instances of Smart EQ. By the way, you can have up to six uh, instances in one group. Now one great thing about groups is that groups have three different layers so I don't know if you can see it but layer one, layer two, layer three and with that we can create some hierarchy in the group. So let's for example say that we want the guitar to be a little bit prominent in this song so let's bring it up to layer one and let's say that we want to push the bass guitar a little bit to the back. Okay let's bring this down to layer three and that way you can play around with the layers and that of course is pretty awesome now another great thing about groups is the so-called cross-channel processing so if we look up here to this switch it is now turned on it's now switched on which means that it will try to affect the individual spectral curves the individual eq curves in such a way to make the group sound more coherent to make it into a more a balanced mix or submix. Now, if you ask me, that is pretty high-end AI. So I'm very impressed by that. Um, I am going to AB this. I know in this case that it is very, very subtle, so I'm not sure if you can hear a difference, but just try to listen for a difference. So let's go. Now again, it is very, very subtle, so not sure if you were able to hear this, but if you listen real closely, you can actually hear that it is actually doing a very good job at this. I'm genuinely very impressed by this. Okay, so what do I think of Smart EQ 3? Now, let me first say that I'm very, very impressed by the technology behind Smart EQ 3, so especially the artificial intelligence very impressive and also in general I mean what we as a species have accomplished technologically is very very uh, impressive and it's definitely being represented by this uh, plugin right here now does it work uh, well I'd say yes I mean it kind of seems to do what Sonable claims it should do so it does offer some more details some more clarity it does seems to um, clean up our tracks pretty well also the group processing seems to be working pretty pretty well so in my opinion yes it actually works now is it actually useful well I think yes but I think you have to see it for what it actually is I mean technically it is still an EQ but because it is so packed with artificial intelligence and the artificial intelligence has taken such a prominent role in this tool it just doesn't really seem to be appropriate anymore to still call it an EQ that's probably also why it's called smart EQ but anyway you know it seems to have become a totally different tool that's no longer an EQ anymore 
So for example, let's say that you have a track and you want to boost a thousand hertz a little bit and you want to cut away everything below 150 hertz. You know, you're, you're not going to use this. You're just going to grab a simple conventional EQ and you're just going to make those simple EQ moves that way. You're not going to grab this for that. You know, this seems to have a totally different purpose. And also, again, this is also not something that you can just throw on every track in your song, then sit back and think, okay, now my song is mixed. This thing is not going to mix your entire song for you. This is a tool that you can use um, to help the mixing process become a little bit easier for you. It will clean up your tracks a little bit. It will help balancing your mix a little bit. Um, it's definitely going to assist you. It's definitely going to push you in the right direction, but that is as far as it goes. But if you use it like that, then yes, it can actually be very, very valuable. So might it be interesting for you? Well, I'd say that depends. I mean, it does come with a few little disadvantages, I guess. So for example, if you're really into mixing, so technical mixing, so if you're really into uh, investigating what frequencies you should uh, affect and how wide should the cue be and why and when, if you're really into things like that, then yeah, this thing is going to take away some of the fun for you. So keep that in mind. Now also, uh, for anyone who is a beginner or anyone who's still learning which is basically everyone um, you know you learn the most of course by just doing exactly that just trying to uh, search a certain frequency what frequencies should I boost what frequency should I cut and why and how you know that's how you learn the most by trial and error and this thing is going to take away some of the opportunities to do that you know, so those might be two little disadvantages. Now, some of the advantages might be um, if you're into speed, as in if you want to mix quickly, this thing might assist you in that. Also, if you want to focus more on other things, let's say that you want to focus more on songwriting and you, you still you're still mixing your music, but you're doing it just because you have to, not because you, you like it, this thing might assist you. Um, and also, you could also learn something from this. I mean, I also uh, mentioned it taking away some learning uh, opportunities for you as a disadvantage, but this thing can also suggest some things to you that otherwise you might have never thought of. You know, in that way, it might also be pretty educational, actually. You know, so yeah, it's it's pretty difficult for me to uh, to determine for anyone if it is uh, if it is actually useful, if it is actually something you would you might be interested in. Let me just say this again: uh, if you can see it for what it is, and if you can use it that way, I think this can be a very very awesome tool to have. But for some people, it might not be absolutely necessary, and for some people, it can even get in the way a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna leave it at that. Just go check it out for yourself. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment below. For now, I'm gonna say goodbye. Thank you for watching and I will talk to you in the next video.